Chris Profi, musically obsessed. Chris Profi, musically obsessed with vinyl CDs and cassettes. Chris Profi, musically obsessed. Oh yeah! All right, I am here to rank Deep Purple's 1975 album, Come Taste the Band. This was their 10th studio album and the only album to feature the Mark IV lineup. Richie Blackmore, out of here, joining some band called Rainbow, and they bring in Tommy Bolin from Zephyr and James Gang fame on guitar to replace Richie Blackmore. Can he do it? I don't know. David Coverdale is still in the band. Glenn Hughes is still in the band. So really, it's a whole different band because the only two remaining from those classic years are John Lord and Ian Pace. Can Deep Purple make an album that's going to stand alongside some of those killer great albums that we all know and love? Well, that's what I'm going to be discussing today because I'm going to rank the songs on Come Taste the Band. I'm also going to be sharing my thoughts with you about uh, the album. So let's get into this album. As I said, it's their 10th studio album produced by Martin Birch. This, of course, is the vinyl version. This is a reissue on Rhino. have always loved that cover. And the back cover as well. Looks like somebody actually did come and taste the band and drink the wine. Comes with a gatefold. All right. I also have a reissue uh, on CD. A Friday music reissue. All right, so let's talk about a couple things. First, I want to talk about this album in terms of Stormbringer. And if you didn't check out my review on Stormbringer, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll leave the link below. Um, I like this album better than Stormbringer, and I'm going to tell you why. Also, vocal wise, I feel like this is some of the best vocals that David Coverdale did while he was in Deep Purple. Um, the vocals are, it's just more of what we expect from David Coverdale. I think it took a couple albums for him to sort of find his style, but you can tell that he's locked in, he's ready to do the White Snake thing and just take the world by storm. This is the album where that, that solidified for him. And uh, like I said, some of the best vocals by him on a Deep Purple record. So let's get into the songs. Nine tunes. I'm going to rank them for you. Coming in at number nine is the song You Keep On Moving. Now, it opens up with this sort of light bass passage, slow in the beginning, but then it breaks into this heavier thing. You got some cool vocal interplay between uh, Glenn Hughes and David Coverdale. Real cool tune. Uh, the solo by John Lord is phenomenal in this tune. Putting it at number nine, you keep on moving. Number eight, probably the song that sounds the least like Deep Purple, but that's okay. I'm talking about the uh, song with two parts, This Time Around and O to G. This Time Around is a piano ballad sung by Glenn Hughes. And this sounds like it's a Stevie Wonder song. It sounds like it could have been on a Stevie Wonder album. It sounds nothing like Deep Purple, but like I said, that's okay. We've kind of come to expect that over the last couple records. And then part two is an instrumental called O to G. This is a progressive, heavy, melodic instrumental. Very, very cool. Shows that the band had their chops in order. So coming in at number eight this time around in Ode to G. Number seven, Drifter. We hear the Tommy Bolin magic, that riff. It's slow. It's this heavy groove. It gets a little bit faster during the chorus. A uh, great solo. And then halfway through the song, there's like this like dreamy passage, which is pretty cool. It kind of takes you on a little bit of a journey. Number seven, Drifter. All right. Number six, getting tighter. Rhythmic guitar intro. Uh, Glenn Hughes, soulful vocal, vocals throughout this tune. And then halfway through, there is a funk breakdown. It is probably the funkiest 
that Deep Purple ever got in the tune Getting Tighter. All right, top five. Number five, I Need Love. Boom, It's got this earworm guitar lick, a bouncy little guitar lick that comes back in at the chorus. Uh, it just gets you going, ropes you in. And then again, you get this funky solo breakdown in the middle. That was what was great about this time of Deep Purple. Maybe some people don't think it was great, but you know, with Burn and Stormbringer and Come Taste the Band, they inject injected some funk, some soul, some R&B. So it, it almost gave a new life to Deep Purple. I guess some people thought maybe it kind of took away from the sound of Deep Purple. I personally think it kind of added to their sound and made it uh, maybe a little bit more even, uh, a little bit even more relevant for the times that they these albums were recorded in. All right, number four, Dealer. All right, heavy, heavy blues bass riff, perfect for anybody who wants to do some air guitar in the pocket, heavy groove, Coverdale singing his ass off. Um, and then here's what's cool about this tune. Tommy Bolin actually makes a vocal performance during the mellow midsection of the tune. So listen, you can hear Tommy Bolin singing in Dealer. All right, top three on Deep Purple's Come Taste the Band. So let's stop for a second. What would you pick for your top three? Or how would you rank them? Well, here's mine. Coming in at number three is Lady Luck. Blues Groove, David Coverdale, becoming the David Coverdale that we all, all know and love. You can hear his vocals. He's so confident in his singing. His uh, vocals had uh, been seasoned over the last couple albums. And you can just hear that he is ready to for world domination with White Snake. And, um, you know, the vocals on Lady Luck, the groove, heavy tune, love it. Number two. Ready? The album opener, Coming Home. Deep Purple always starts their albums with a killer track. This is no different. Coming Home, uh, fast-paced, similar to a Highway Star or a Burn. Um, listen to the solo by Tommy Bolin on this tune. Basically saying, hey, you know, I'm not here to replace Richie Blackmore. I don't think you could replace Richie Blackmore, but... I'm here to show you what I can do and give Richie a run for his money. So number two, coming home, and that leaves number one, Love Child. My gosh, listen to the little riff in the beginning. Killer, kind of Sabbath, heavy. And then again, Coverdale's vocals, kicking you in the ass. So number one, Love Child. All right, so let me go over these again. Number nine, you keep on moving. Eight, this time around, O to G. Seven, Drifter. Six, getting tighter. Five, I need love. Ba -na -na, -na -na. Four, Dealer. Three, Lady Luck. Two, coming home. And number one, Love Child. What are your thoughts, guys, on this album? How do you rank it in the Deep Purple discography? Do you like it? Do you, do you mind that Richie Blackmore is gone? Do you think Tommy Bolin did a good job? Um, I do want to say this, though, and I should have said this in the beginning of the uh, video, but this is sort of a, a darker time in the Deep Purple history because, unfortunately, after this album, Deep Purple would break up and they wouldn't uh, you know, make an album until 84, Perfect Strangers. But also, um, about a little less than a year later, Tommy Bolin uh, passed away from uh, drug issues. So... You know, you have this great album and Come Taste the Band, but it's sort of, like I said, kind of a sort of a dark point in their in their history. And, um, you know, unfortunately, those things happened. But I think we can kind of look back now at this underrated gem and kind of see, you know, what Tommy added to Deep Purple and, you know, kind of how they survived post Richie Blackmore. And I think they they did a great job. So let me know your thoughts below. All right, everyone.